measure of good software is speed. The speed at which you can execute tasks, workflows, and large-scale projects has always been the benchmark of the impact of software on our lives. Humans, as it turns out, really suck at computation, statistics, and constructing large mental maps of complex systems. But don't take my word for it, Daniel Kahneman famously won the Nobel Prize for his research into how much we suck at these things. Good software makes life better by augmenting human intelligence, and it does this without enormous complexity or learning curves. Good software delivers an intuitive system that generates immediate value and gratification. To evaluate good software, to uncover what is good software, an organization only needs one metric, time. Time to delivery, time to insight, time to the cultivation of your organization's human capital. Good software should deliver these things, not in months, not in years, but in days or weeks. And Foundry is good software. But why? Why is Foundry so much better than the alternatives? Why can Foundry do things in days or weeks that would take you months or years with other technology? Starting with the obvious and the thing that people often overlooked, which is that Foundry is a full stack platform. What does that mean? Foundry is a first party integration of open source and proprietary technology designed to achieve data harmonization and digital transformation. The complexity of integrating this technology cannot be understated and is one of the primary reasons homegrown Foundry-like solutions fail to deliver actual business value. Because basically in order to deliver that value, you're gonna be in a different business. <laughs> you're gonna be in the big data OS business. You're gonna be in the tra digital transformation business. And chances are you're not in that business. And Foundry, the way, it's, it, the way it's constructed is it has several layers where it's integrated all this technology, all of which complement and amplify the effect of each other. And that leads to an outcome that is unparalleled in the industry. And now let's dive into each of those layers and how they amplify and complement one another. The first layer in the Foundry full stack is the data integration layer. And Foundry has made the marginal cost of data integration effectively zero through its pre-built data connections, its data connection client, and software-defined data integration technology, which uses ML and AI to understand data and its meaning without the need for human intervention. Found Palantir spent roughly 20 years building all of these various data connections. You can go back to interviews with Alex Karp in 2012, where he's talking about all of the work this company has put into understanding data and not just individual data silos, like all of the data. And it did that through its work with the US government and the US military. And we are now benefiting from a lot of that early research and development. There is no, their ability to connect to data is unparalleled. There's literally nothing on the market that can even come close to not only the number of data sources supported, but the ways in which you can connect to it. And unique to Foundry is its ability to govern that data from the moment of ingest all the way out to the application layer. The security and governance that you put on that data at the moment it's ingested will follow it all the way through all of the layers in Foundry. And this is the first layer, the first way it ampl amplifies the effect of data integration because it combines data integration with data governance throughout the entire journey and lifetime of that data. The next layer inside Palantir Foundry is the data engineering layer. Code authoring, code workbooks, and pipeline builder are a suite of products designed to allow everyone from data engineers, data scientists, and Excel jockeys to model data. And unique to Foundry is its ability to version data. In Foundry, you treat data just like you treat code, because data is code. Inside Foundry, it has its own Git integration, which allows you to create feature branches of your pipeline code and to see the downstream effect of those changes before they're released. You can leverage unit testing, declarative quality checks on your code, and uh, alerting and monitoring within Foundry so that you know that the changes you're introducing won't break downstream applications and downstream work workflows. 
And this is really unique to Palantir. Most organizations will spend months, if not years, trying to get version control of data correct and trying to get all of the uh, CI CD integrations correct. When you sit down in Foundry Day Zero, your engineers don't have to configure an environment. It's pre-built for you. They don't have to build the CI CD system. They don't have to integrate the CI CD system. This is all ready for you on the day the engineer sits down, which amplifies their effect by a factor of 10. In addition to the ability to leverage version control inside Palantir Foundry, you don't have to build all of the dependency management of a typical big data stack where there are dozens of open source technologies to manage. And again, this makes this allows your engineers to focus solely on things that generate business value because guess what? Maintaining big data stacks is not the business you're in and it's not the, it's not what you want your engineers spending their time doing. Foundry's data engineering layer is a first party integration of popular open source technologies like Spark and Flink that allow your engineers to produce value the moment they sit down in front of Foundry. The next layer inside Foundry that benefits from this amplification of the previous two layers is the ontology. And Foundry's ontology allows organizations to model their data as real world entities, complete with real world relationships, behaviors, and state. And Palantir does this by combining the best database technologies such as graph relationships, time series, transactions, and columnar storage with custom actions that can encode behaviors and do things like trigger alerts or modify external systems such as ERP systems or trigger downstream workflows. And when you combine this with Foundry simulation engine, the ontology can let organizations run what if scenarios and see the effects of changes in the real world to their business before they occur. And this is the real promise of digital transformation. In digital transformation, we don't want yet another dashboard. We want a new platform that's going to allow us to see the effect of changes before they happen, to alert us of things before they become criti critical. And Foundry's ontology system is extremely unique in this ability. It, it not only brings together lots of different data silos into a common model and links up innumerable other systems that are integrated into Foundry applications, but it also allows us to, to power true simulations to see how the war, what will actually happen in the real world when a change is introduced into the system. And being instead of being reactive, you can be proactive. You can go out and make changes to your supply chain before it becomes critical. You can go out and respond to a, an alert or do preventative maintenance before something actually breaks. And this is the real power of digital transformation and where we're trying to go. And it will ultimately push humans, human operators, out to the edges of the system. And at the heart of that transformation, at the heart of that new way of working is Foundry's ontology. And one of the last major layers in Foundry is the application layer. And the application layer is built directly on top of the ontology system. And it includes low to no code tools like Workshop, where you can build complete full featured applications and underlying it is the use of React. And you'll build these full featured modern React applications in a very modular way. And that really enables you to quickly assemble from a library of components, interesting views of your data, but also things that actually perform interactions with other systems. And they do that by leveraging the power of the ontology. So within Workshop, you can invoke ontology actions, which can then trigger alerts or write back to ERP systems or integrate with other third party systems. And so your t the operators within Workshop who do not need to be engineers can come in and build a full blown application on using leveraging the power of that ont ontological modeling and that ontology layer to actually do things. And that's what Foundry gets right. It separates concerns between the, the ontological modeling and the, the systems integration and behavior layer and the actual application building layer, which allows operators who are not engineers, who are not software engineers, to build actual systems of value quickly. And the real power of this is going to be the recreation of traditional SaaS applications on top of Foundry's ontological system. If you take any modern SaaS application, whether that's Expensify or whether that's Amplitude or whether it's any innumerable number of analytics tools you're currently working with, it's much better for the organization to generate first party data within Foundry rather than all of these other innumerable SaaS products that now represent 70% of an organization's software. It's much better to allow your internal folks or a network, a consortium of 
other people who are building these products on Foundry to work with your company and deliver that software in this application layer. And what's great about the application layer is that you can templatize these apps and have and ship them to other Foundry users through their template system and now the, the Palantir Foundry marketplace and, and start recreating your organization's SaaS directly on Foundry. And why does that matter? It matters because your data never leaves your organization. Today, currently, when we have to build SaaS products, not only are they super, are they incredibly innumerable with many disparate ways they're deployed, chosen by the people that created them, where something like the Foundry Marketplace consolidates the management of SaaS into a single platform and single system, which is in and of itself beneficial because we are they they are building SaaS products to manage SaaS products at this at at this, the scale it's at today. The other reason that it's really valuable is that you don't have to pay extra money to get your data back from those siloed SaaS providers. Today, typically, you have to engage in an enterprise contract. It costs a lot of money to pull that native source data back out through the tool so you can finally get at it and model it with the rest of your organization's data, maybe some alternative data, to see what's actually going on in your business. So recreating SaaS on top of the ontological modeling system in Foundry using the applications layer, which is like Workshop and Quiver, is going to be, in my opinion, the way we deliver software in the future. And the last layer inside Palantir Foundry that delivers incredible time savings by amplifying the effects of all the previous layers is ML objectives. And modeling objectives serve as a mission control for streamlining model management, evaluation, review, release, and deployment for a defined problem. And it, that defined problem piece is very important. ML objectives forces you into defining the business problem you're trying to solve with the model. And that ensures that your, your, your data scientists and ML engineers are staying aligned with the business value for what they're creating. Objectives enables the full model life cycle for any modeling problem, including those not traditionally addressed by ML ops tools, such as simulation and optimization. And additionally, and this is an important additionally, Python and TypeScript functions can be fully managed and deployed as models, enabling smooth transition of downstream applications from business logic to feedback driven machine learning. What does that mean? It means that I can take and write a almost a heuristic in TypeScript or Python that encapsulates a lot of business logic that can be used by my models and to be deployed as models themselves so that you can make complex decisions, right? So like often within, for example, a supply chain, there might be really complicated logic surrounding the time of year something is happening or the particular vendors that an event is occurring with. So you want to be able to codify a lot of the business process and logic into these functions. So in addition to standard models you'll produce, you can also deploy custom functions that can do things and that can essentially run business process and application logic for you. And that is really, really powerful when it's combined with things like the Foundry rules engine and Foundry applications and the ontological system. So ML objectives is the, the next level of digital transformation where we're leveraging machine learning and AI to help us surface signal data to help us find the signals in the noise for which people can, that for downstream operators can take action against and to actually solve real problems related to preventative maintenance or to, in the case of medical, faster diagnostics. So the, the true power of Foundry is in its ability to produce and manage these models in such a way that they deliver business value, they're tied to business value, and complement all of the other parts of the, of the Foundry operating system. So now that we've recapped how Foundry is a full stack platform and how all of those layers within the stack complement and amplify the effects of one another, let's move on to the next reason Palantir enables such rapid delivery of business value. And that second thing is it's opinionated. <laughs> And I often say when you have unopinionated developers creating software in a high stakes environment, you often get what's called a train wreck, right? So like one of the things that um, biz that businesses need to realize is that there needs to be an opinionated way in which you use technology to yield a positive outcome for the business. And Foundry incorporates a best practice framework for data engineering, ontological modeling, ML and AI objectives, workflows and applications. And this opinion is based on nearly 20 years of experience making data-driven decisions and digital transformation a reality in the harshest environments imaginable while working with the U.S. government. 
And organizations will find that transforming your business using Foundry in the way that Palantir prescribes will greatly speed things up and improve your outcomes. And these opinions are often codified in archetype solutions, which are available to today on the Palantir marketplace, and also in their um, abstract use cases, which you can find in the documentation. And it shows the way they think about how you harmonize data, the way you think about how you build applications on top of that data, and how you use ML and AI effectively with humans in the loop to provide a symbiotic relationship between man and machine to yield an amazing outcome that will digitally transform your business. So following this prescription, this prescribed path, this prescribed methodology is, in my opinion, the other thing that enables such rapid delivery of business value and positive outcomes. And lastly, the thing that enables Foundry to deliver business value so quickly is it's incredibly flexible. Foundry's ontology system allows it to serve as a central hub for system integrators. And this is essential when you're trying to combine so many disparate systems, both that encompass everything from legacy technology to modern SaaS applications, so that you can operationalize and harmonize all of that data. And this allows Foundry to not only replace existing systems, but also augment and improve existing solutions and workflows. And that's extremely important because often one of the biggest challenges of digital transformation is change management. Managing the expectations and the, the way people don't, a lot of times people don't want to change the way they work by being able to complement existing systems and augment them with things like alerts and notifications powered by ML and AI, you can actually surface data and make lives better for people even if they never leave the systems that they're currently working in. Of course we want to migrate people over to a modern platform like Foundry, but by leveraging its capabilities to integrate with other solutions and be flexible, we, it, you essentially solve the change management problem that, that has plagued so many digital transformation efforts. And I think this is critical to the success within an organization and it's easy, it's rapid to integrate exist, uh, other systems into the Foundry ecosystem because they've solved so many of the data integration problems and because they've created the, app, the actions layer in their ontological systems, it becomes much, much easier to integrate these systems. Also, open standards uh, allow custom applications to participate in this application consortium. So open standards like using RESTful APIs allows Foundry enabled applications to reach users where they are at. And that's really important because you can build custom mobile applications. You can build custom web applications that reach people through your existing organizations, portals, and current you know, technology stack that integrate with Foundry through these open standards. So again, this is the last sort of major pillar that makes Palantir Foundry so much faster at enabling digital transformation. And lastly, I'd like to leave you with a quote that I often bring up um, related to that change management piece. And it's, you know, people who cling to the pylons of history aren't wrong. They just need a compelling vision of the future in order to let go. And Foundry and Foundry-enabled software is that future. But it's important that we speak clearly and articulate the reasons for that future and that we don't necessarily force people to come along. I think when you present the arguments clearly and you can show them in a, a better way of working, a way that cultivates human capital within the organization, upskills every employee and makes them better, people will do nothing but get excited.